Hey guys, welcome back to Rock Harbor Church. In this video, I wanna give you a walkthrough of the new tech booth that we installed here at the back of the room. I'm gonna be calling this a great semi-permanent uh, install for a tech booth and the setup that I'm gonna walk you through. Eventually someday, it would be great if we were able to do a bit of construction, you know, to actually put up, you know, a little wall around here, maybe even, you know, have like a solid little platform to kind of elevate the tech booth as well. But for now, for what we've been working on, transitioning from what this tech booth was, it was a portable solution. We had this flight case with expandable uh, shelves that functioned as tabletops, and we had another little table next to that flight case and the cables were quite a mess and it was just really hard to even work on the tech booth and add any new gear or solutions to the setup. So part of wanting to make sure we have a strong foundation for the tech in this room is having a great booth in the back of the room um, that has great workstations to be able to operate from. But then also as we keep adding and expanding upon our systems, we just have a good foundation to start from. And the other huge thing too, that was an issue with the previous setup is that we had just so many cables coming on the floor into the bottom of the tech booth before. And now if you're actually to look on the floor behind this tech booth, we pretty much have this one cable run that comes from the back wall through here. Still a little bit of a mess where you got some gaff tape we're using. Uh, we still have one stray cable here. Uh, this will be on the back wall soon uh, because we're not completely done. We're probably, you know, 95% of the done of some of these, this, this work of installing this tech booth. Uh, but this is, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be here for most of the summer, so I wanted to show you guys before I, before I head out. So when I'm thinking about a tech booth in a church environment, I like to think about what's it gonna be like when we're operating at it, what's gonna be comfortable. I'm a big fan of bar stool height tech booths. It's great if you can get a stand up, sit down desk, um, but I you know, didn't want to have us spend that much money on this setup. Um, so we went with these bar stool height tables. We actually have two tables that are, they're each five feet long and then they're only two feet wide. So this entire tech booth is about 10 feet long. And I'm gonna put the links down below in case if I say a measurement or spec is wrong with the gear, you'll see the exact gear that we actually ordered for this setup. And then what we did on Amazon, we got these tabletops here. And then underneath the tabletops, you'll see that there are these legs that we ended up just you know, mounting to the tabletops. It was pretty easy to do. Um, I don't think these specific tabletops were made for the specific legs that we're using under here, but it works. Just make sure the measurements of the legs that width-wise it's gonna fit for whatever tabletop you buy. They have plenty of screws in them. Um, we drew, drilled the uh, pilot holes for the screws and then put a ton of screws in each of the legs. Um, so it was really easy to get this installed. We had about four or five guys who came in and, and got all this done within just a few hours. So it's really, really easy setup. Before we continue on with the video, a quick word from our sponsor, the Worship Ministry School Accelerator Program. You may not know this, but in addition to all the YouTube content we're creating here at Churchfront, we also partner with local church worship and production ministries to help them hit their ministry goals. Over the past four years, we've worked personally with hundreds of worship ministries around the globe. We've helped churches navigate upgrading their worship tech, building better systems to grow their team of volunteers, as well as address any knowledge or skill gaps required for modern day worship ministry. When you join the Accelerator program, you get access to our entire library of online on-demand courses and you get unlimited access to our team of Churchfront coaches. To learn more about joining the program, click the link below this video to apply and schedule your free strategy session today. Now let's get back to the video. So back here, you can see we kind of got a little bit of a mess going here, but at least we have the foundation to manage the mess uh, much better than it was. So in addition to the, uh, the tabletops and the legs, we also got these cable trays here, which function great um, to be able to just put, put the cables up here so that whenever you do, you know, if you're sitting at the tech booth or you look under from the other side, you don't just have this mess of cables hanging around down here everywhere. Um, of course, there's some limitations to how clean we could have made this because we still need to actually replace some of these cables. Like we, we, we need to get the appropriate length USB cables and HDMI cables. We're using like a 10 foot HDMI cable to go two feet and that's gonna, that's gonna create a problem. But again, it's all about getting the right foundation in place, knowing where we're gonna put workstations. This is kind of a temporary wiring solution but then it's gonna be easy for us to come back through here 
and replace these cables and adapters with the proper lengths. So right here, I think this was a, this is some of Kevin's handiwork. So we have probably the most pressing issue right now is we need to get a better video distribution sy system going on. Um, we've got Cat5 runs, we've got HDMI runs, we've got Cat5 to H, uh, HDMI converters everywhere. It is just a mess. So what I hope we can do in the very near future is get an a ATEM Constellation uh, 2ME switcher that's gonna go in this rack that we have underneath the table. And that's gonna be pretty much all of our video switching and distribution. It's really gonna clean up the majority of the mess that you're that you're witnessing right here. We also got this rack solution, so it's a 16U rack, and I've got some shelves in here. We actually put our Mac Mini for the M2 Mac Mini for Pro Presenter back here, um, and I have it so we can easily, you know, take the curtain off and plug things in, and if we need to. We also have a Thunderbolt dock for the Mac Mini that's gonna rest up here on the tabletop. So here's a look at this uh, Thunderbolt dock on top of the, the tech booth table here. This just makes it easy if you're at the ProPresenter workstation to plug you know, simple USB devices uh, in when you're, when you're working from that workstation so you don't have to come down here. So you can see here is the Mac Mini. Um, and then here's some Ultra Studio Mini monitors, again, this is completely a mess that's gonna get you know improved over time, but believe it or not, this is still way better than what it was like less than a week ago. Of course, in addition to the tabletops, we have these VESA mounts, so we've got a dual monitor set up here uh, for ProPresenter, and then, it's funny, you can see this is our ProPresenter machine, but this monitor is like going bad, and I've, I've never seen a Dell monitor do this, so we'll have to replace that. We'll just get simple you know, 1080p monitors back here. They don't need to be 4K or anything fancy. Usually this is ProPresenter. They can also see kind of the main content output for the congregation here as well, or this can just be another desktop on the computer. And then we've got another VESA mount here. Currently we're using OBS, and then we have you know, another desktop to pull up whatever we need. Here's the control for the PTZ cameras. Let's take a look down below the rack here, what else we've got. So we do have battery uh, backup power supplies here. Um, so those are handy in case of power went out. This whole tech booth wouldn't just lose power. It would still, still have power back here. Uh, we've got some drawers just for like some remotes and gaff tape and accessories. Uh, we've got uh, kind of on top of this drawer functioning like a shelf for charging iPads to be able to run the X32 remotely. Um, then we've got some of the, the video distribution going on down here, HDMI hubs, HDMI to Cat5 hubs, and then of course our Mac Mini's on top there. So um, the only other thing, again, I think I'll see changing is eventually somewhere in here we'd actually just have like a, an H, uh, ATEM Constellation uh, HD2ME. So all the cables, again, coming from the back wall, they go through the cover here. It's kind of a mess because we have extra slack that we're just keeping underneath the rack right here. Um, and that is our rack. And then we've got a Furman, of course, if we want to cut power um, to, to everything. The Furman is plugged into the battery backup. Um, and then all the computers are plugged into the Furman. And then we've got this audio interface here for our live stream. That's getting our matrix mix from the X32 and then you can adjust levels and gain, and then that gets sent in to this PC. And this is the big old Alienware PC uh, computer that's running OBS. We also got some nice stools. So I'm uh, you know, a fan of being comfortable back here. Uh, these school stools are probably, probably a little bit overkill. I'm not sure how much, if they were $200 together or if they were $200 a piece, but we've got three of them. Um, but they're comfortable stools. So I really like the ergonomics of you know, being raised a bit higher than the congregation because we're at floor level here on the ground. And I also like it, like I know for my height, I'm five, ten and a half, and it's comfortable for me to just stand here uh, as well. So that's just really great ergonomics, like working at the tech booth. For the most part, when I'm back here, I'll probably just be standing. The other kind of shift that we made to these workspaces is you'll see we actually have a sound console on the very edge over here. Uh, before, it was like on the other side. And the problem that caused is that, you know, as a front of house operator, you're just like way off to the side, not at all where the, the actual speakers are, are filling the room. So you just, we're not getting an accurate sense of what the, the mix actually sound like. It's still not great right here, but at least it's closer to the center of the room. Um, and then of course you can just grab an iPad and walk wherever you need to, to get a great mix. So then 
What's nice about the table skirt here, again, this is a pretty inexpensive solution because you get the table skirt, you get like the right height table skirt. I didn't have to cut this or anything. It was 72 inches and then you get these little Velcro clamps. Um, you gotta be careful because if someone comes and yanks on the table skirt, like it's, it's gonna come off. It's not on there super solid. Um, but again, it's great and a good table skirt will cover a multitude of cable management sins uh, underneath the, uh, the table here. So it takes me just like a few seconds to go through here and Velcro them all back on and then voila, it looks nice and clean. One reason we got only a two foot deep table is because we want to have enough space for people to walk back here, right? Because we've got, this room is like really full. They're gonna have to go to two services soon, um, but we've got people running around through here, kids running around all the time. Um, so we wanted to make sure there's plenty of space. And yeah, in my opinion, I just don't think a tech, tech booth table needs to be like super deep, um, especially when you can hide everything underneath uh, in a rack or using uh, cable trays. So the other thing that I got set up here is a Stream Deck. So what's cool is Stream Deck actually has come out with a ProPresenter plugin built into it, which makes it really easy to put different like ProPresenter macros on a Stream Deck. Um, you can advance slides of the Stream Deck. I think my favorite thing about having this set up is that let's say I'm sitting back here and I'm operating ProPresenter and my front of house engineer wants to pull up Logic Pro to like, you know, play back the virtual sound check. Well, he can do that, but I can still operate my ProPresenter slides forward and backwards without actually being within the ProPresenter application. So it's kind of a cool way to control ProPresenter uh, without actually having to touch the keyboard and mouse if that scenario arises. Another cool thing we have is this monitor setup for our ProPresenter operators. So they are getting a mono mix bus that pretty much just has the click and guide and our vocal mics so that they get a good sense of what part of the song is coming up next, just like the musicians do on stage. We are automating most of the time for most weeks, but in case the automation fails, the ProPresenter operator can hear the click and guide cue and they're always able to stay ahead with advancing lyrics. So even if you're not automating ProPresenter with playback like we are here, I still think it's great to have some sort of monitoring solution for your ProPresenter operator so they can more accurately advance slides and you're not gonna have late cues. I already mentioned this briefly, but we do have Logic Pro that's also installed on this M2 Mac Mini here so we can run virtual sound checks. This has been super helpful as I've spent time with our sound volunteers here, coaching them through our mixing blueprint, how all the channels and mix buses work together, how everything's routed, uh, for me to be able to come back here and just listen with them with a virtual sound check and practice mixing with them um, so we can really analyze the mix and it's just the best way to teach in my opinion rather than having to have live musicians on stage and ask them to keep playing in forever or looping that, that section. You don't need to do that. So if you have a digital mixing console like an X32, um, you get a DAW like Logic Pro or Ableton or Pro Tools or Reaper or whatever your favorite DAW is. Record the raw stems from here. Um, this is pulling raw audio from the stage boxes and then you play back that audio through the X32. And I love how the X32 makes it easy to go into the routing section. And then right here you can see it's in play mode uh, where it's basically pulling audio from the card inputs. But if I switched over here to record mode, now it's pulling from our stage boxes because it's gonna be recording audio coming directly from the stage boxes. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. Hopefully it inspires you if you are looking to build a semi-permanent tech booth with some of these simple budget-friendly solutions. I think it'll be helpful to you. Uh, it's really gonna help set a, a strong foundation as you continue to clean and organize your worship tech solutions and as you upgrade them. One of my favorite things about latest tools with worship tech is that it's just eliminating, I feel like, the amount of hardware you actually need to, to have a professional solution at your church. So I'll go ahead and link down below all the things I mentioned in this video, just so you do get an idea of exactly what we purchased for this, but don't feel restricted to those. Really measure out your own space and, and think about what's gonna work well for you. And if you would like our team at Churchfront to come alongside you, both remotely or in person, and help you optimize and upgrade the worship tech at your church, 
church, then check out worshipministryschool.com. You can apply for a free strategy session. You can speak with one of our enrollment coaches. We'll get to know your situation more. And if it sounds like a good fit, we'll tell you more about our program and what it looks like to get involved. And lastly, don't forget to check out that worship ministry toolkit down below for all of our favorite gear recommendations. We'll see you next time.